The Challenge of the Yukon. Oh, King! Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Spring had come to the Yukon. The snow had melted along the trails, leaving many of them thick, oozing rivers of mud. And with the change in weather came the plague of man and beast, mosquitoes. Instead of a dog sled, Sergeant Preston drove a travois, which his dogs pulled effortlessly. Two men walked the trail with the Mountie, sullen, resentful expressions on their faces. And in their eyes was the cold, unreasoning, deadly hatred of killers being brought to justice. Trying to make this a death march, Mountie? Yeah, walking us through miles of this muck. Yeah, you're walking because there's no better way of getting you where you're going. Yeah, that's what I call real nice here. Taking such good care of your prisoners. Forget it, Trigger. I ain't forgetting nothing. We might be able to put us in jail, but that's no sign we're staying there, see? Charlie and me will both get out. And when we do, we'll especially remember the pains you took to put us in. You've done a lot of talking, but so far it's added up to nothing. And you sure wish it did, didn't you? Huh? Yeah, like maybe telling you where you can find the boss in the hideout. And that's something you'll never know, Mountie. But I'm telling you this much. We won't be behind bars long. Well, in a way, you're right. You won't be behind bars long. You're both wanted for murder. As far as you're concerned, jail will just be a stopping off place till you walk to the gallows. Don't worry. That rope will never be around our necks. Uh, those mosquitoes, enough to drive a man crazy. Well, this is as far as we'll travel. All right, fellow. Ho, King. Ho, you Malaboots. <laughs> When they made camp off the trail, Sergeant Preston, his two prisoners, and the great dog King made their way to the spring, the only water source within several miles. Running ahead of the men, King reached the spring, lowering his head to the water. But as he did, he caught an odd scent, a scent that was distasteful to him. What's wrong with that pooch of yours, Marty? How come he's turned up his nose at that water? I don't know. Unless there's something wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it ain't good enough for him, but I'm thirsty. What about you? I think I'll abide by King's judgment. Mm, scared you, huh? Here. You want a drink, Charlie? No. Preston ain't taking any chances, and neither am I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice and cool. Yes, sir. Early the next morning. Uh, yeah, we ought to be in Machette City tonight, Trig. Hey, Trigger. Trigger. What's the trouble, King? It's Trigger. He, he ain't moving. Look at his face. It must have been that water. So King was right. He... I thought I heard him calling me last night. But I wasn't sure. Seemed like a, like I was dreaming. Well, we're starting now for Machette City. Trigger won't be hanging for his crimes, but you will. Get the dogs up, King. Two weeks later, in the headquarters of the mounted police, Sergeant Preston sat in Inspector Maynard's office. The great dog King settled on the floor, close to his master's feet. So Charlie Kane made the break, did he? Yes. You weren't out of Machete City 24 hours when he got away. One of the guards was killed in a gunfight with two members of the gang. Hmm. Well, Trigger said they'd never stay in jail. Your job would be to bring Kane back to jail with the whole Hennessy gang to stay there. 
The Law and Order Commission of Machete City and Three Forks will give you whatever help they can. You know, sir, I have a hunch Art Hennessy has his hideout somewhere between those two towns. Three Forks and Machete City. If you were right, that should make the job easier for you. Well, good luck, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Retracing his trail to Machete City, Sergeant Preston sought out the guard who had survived the gunfight with the Hennessy gang. He listened closely to the old prospector turned lawman as the two of them sat in the small building that served as the jail. In broad daylight they came, Sergeant. There was three of them. Open fire on Sam and me. We barely had a chance. Yes, I heard about Sam. They filled him so full of lead he was dead before he ever hit the ground. Me, I stopped a couple of slugs in my shoulder, but I, I live to tell about it. I just hope I live long enough to see the whole rotten bunch of them swinging for what they've done. Well, from the description you've given me, Clem, I know one of the men was Art Hennessy, all right. Did you see what direction they went when they left town? North. They didn't waste no time, I can tell you. By the time the men was out of the saloon to see what all the ruckus was about, the whole bunch of them was gone. Well, that proves one point, anyway. That hideout must be between here and Three Forks. Ah, with a good 70-mile stretch of country in the middle. Well, it's a start, Clem. And so far, that's the only clue we've had. For months, we've been trying to locate the hideout. I sure hope you find it. I guess one murder, more or less, don't matter much to them fellas. But Sam was my friend. A better man never lived, Sergeant. I just want to have the pleasure of putting them under lock and key in this here jail. Believe me, if that ever happens, there ain't nothing on this side of the Great Divide will get them out till they walk out to their hanging. And they'll hang, Clem. If I have to spend the next year looking for them, they'll hang. Sleeping back from the trail at night, and during the day covering it carefully, examining every remnant of a campsite, the Mountie worked tirelessly, hoping to find some clue that would lead him to what he sought. Meanwhile, not 20 miles from where the policeman had camped, a short, heavy-set man halted his dog team in front of a well-concealed cave. Shut up, you mutt! Hey, Charlie! Yeah? Say, I didn't expect you back so soon, Pete. Listen, you remember the Mountie that took you and Trigger in? Oh, I remembered. I'll never forget him. Why? Well, he's camping on the trail about 20 miles from here. I took the back trail, cutting through timber most of the way. But I got a look at him. And I'll lay you ten to one he's out to put you behind bars again. Oh, that's interesting. Mighty interesting. Uh, too bad Art ain't here. So he thinks he'll trail Charlie Kane, does he? <laughs> well, we'll just go and meet him, Pete. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Take that rifle of yours and your revolver. Come on. Several hours later, with moonlight filtering through the leaves of the birch trees and illuminating the trail, the great dog King raised his head from between his paws. His fur bristled dangerously as he stood up. Uh, King, King, what is it? All right, buddy. Reach. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, thought I'd save you the trouble of looking me up. Might as well get set to travel. Never mind the supplies. You won't need them where you're going. Quiet, boy. Looks like you're holding the cards this time, Kane. You bet I am, Ronnie. And I'm playing them my way. Now get moving. With Charlie Kane holding a gun on him, Sergeant Preston with the great dog King covered the trail to the outlaw hideout. King waited, his fury almost smothering obedience for the command from his master to jump these men. But when they halted in front of the camp and the command came, it was not the one he had hoped for. Go on, King. Back to Machette City. Bring help, understand? Go on, fella. Go to Clem Wyatt. For a moment, the King hesitated. But the urgency in the Mountie's voice left no doubt in the dog's mind. Hey, where's that dog of yours going? What's the difference where he's going? I'm the one you're holding a gun on. Yeah, well, I can turn it on him just... Why, you dirty... Hey, Pete! This gun in your ribs is loaded, Mountie. Uh, first time anybody ever tried to sock me for firing at a mutt. That dog's worth five of you. You took a pretty big chance there, Preston. One of those bullets might have stopped you. One of them will yet. But I want Hennessy to be here to see it. Mm -hmm. 
Sergeant Preston sat beside the outlaw's campfire, his eyes straining toward the rim of a distant hill. He wondered if Charlie Kane had hit his mark. Had King managed to escape safely? Accepting the food the outlaws offered him, the policeman refused the cup Charlie Kane held out. You uh, have a drink, Money? Where'd you get that water? Out by the spring. Why? Well, that's what I thought. No, thanks. No, I don't want any. What's wrong, Charlie? I don't know. He says he don't want anything to drink. All right. So let him alone. You're not forgetting what happened to Trigger, are you, Charlie? Of course I ain't forgetting what happened. Hey, now, wait a minute. You don't say... All I'm saying is that I don't want any of that water. Well, you said Trigger died from drinking poisoned water, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, he did. Listen, Monty, this water's all right, see? Well, maybe it is, but I don't want any. He must be right, Charlie. This water's all right. How do we know it is? You'll know. First, you begin to feel a little lightheaded. Yeah? Then you begin to feel a slight pain. And it's more difficult to get your breath. Charlie, Charlie, I... I didn't want to say anything to you, but now it is harder to breathe. Trigger died I... inside a few hours. Oh, sometimes it takes longer before you feel the effect. There's something you can do about it. Sure there is. I know. I read someplace once that if you swallow something, you, you'll be all right. Then you won't die. Listen, Mountie, you know about medicine? Give us something that'll, that'll My counteract it. medical with... kid is with the supplies you insisted I leave back along the trail, Pete. I can't do anything for you. Yeah, but there must be some way. There's got to be... Well, there is one thing. Yeah? What is it? We'll give you... You'll walk out of here as free as air if you can help us. What about it, Charlie? Sure, sure. It's a boy. We're wasting time. Break open all of the bullets you have here. We'll need quite a bit of powder. Then mix that with water and swallow the mixture. The two outlaws worked quickly, breaking one bullet after the other, following the Mountie's instructions. Five minutes passed. Then 15. They swallowed the bitter mixture hurriedly. And as Preston prepared to leave the camp... Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? We made a bargain. I've kept my part of it. Uh, sure you did, <laughs> You're staying here. And just what makes you think that I will? Thinking don't enter into it, Monty. I know you will. You better stand right where you are. So that's it, huh? Well, you won't stop me with that gun, Charlie. There's not a bullet left in it. He's right, Charlie. We busted every one of them over. And this is where I start busting something besides bullets. Stay okay, Pete. Get him, Pete. Get him, Pete. You sick crooks, I'll show you. No, no, no. King, King, old boy. Ah, oh, you're safe, fella. Sure, sure he's safe. Let us right here. Say, what's going on? Sure looks like you put the fear of your fist into these two. Charlie, Pete, how did it happen this morning he got the drop on oh, you? I forgot to tell you, Sergeant. We met this fella coming along the trail. Hennessy, huh? Yeah, I got his guns. He was on his way here when I recognized yeah, him. It was a water, Art. He never would have got the best of us if it hadn't been poisoned. Poisoned water? It ain't fit to drink, Art. Are you talking about the water from the spring? What do you think I'm talking about? I told you how Trigger got it from a spring. Oh, you lame-brained fool. The spring where you and Trigger camped with the Mountie was exactly 35 miles between Three Forks and Machette City, wasn't it? Yes, it was about that, Hennessy. I calculated myself how far a team could travel along that trail from either town. Then I poisoned the only spring within miles. I've kept it poisoned so as to stop anybody who would be too near the hideout. The way I figured it, Preston should have died the way Trigger did. Well, then... Then the water here's all right? Sure it is. Ain't that what I just said? But, but the Mountie, he I said didn't that... say the water was poisoned. I refused to drink any. The power of suggestion and your own imagination did the rest. I don't get all this, Sergeant. I'll explain it to you later, Clem. Right now, you have the chance you wanted to put the Hennessy gang under lock and key. And this time, they'll stay there. <coughs> yes, fella, you did a great job. The case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. Jack McCarthy speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>